since we're at 10.02. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the meeting today is to help bring us up to speed a little bit with the Historical Commission um, on some of the things that are going on with the Chime Tower. So Patrick or Michael, can you speak for just a moment? Sure, I can I'll, speak. I'll so Michael. Um, we have gone out um, and had the engineering work done um, for both the structural analysis of the building plus the rooftop, uh, the roof. And then of course we've had um, Verdin company in about the chimes themselves. So we've been able to um, get the cost estimates on everything to, res to restore the building um, and fix uh, the issues that we have in the Chime Tower. And I know Chris, please jump in because I know you started this before I got here, getting this ball rolling um, as far as the uh, getting these proposals in and figuring out what needs to be done. Um, so, like I said, structural analysis, the roof uh, analysis, and then the bells themselves have all been done. So what we've done now is taking all those, taking the maximum cost of if we were to do everything, and then putting that forward as an article to go to town meeting um, for funds to be appropriated. Then once funds are appropriated, we'd begin looking at actually procuring engineering and the rest. And then coming back because there are decisions that obviously the historical needs to make and um, that need to be made around this renovation of the Chime Tower. Questions about that have been raised about adding bells, taking out bells, um, restoring it to just its historical uh, nature. Um, and, then, um, and then I'd open it up to any other questions that you guys have, or Chris, if there's anything else you think we should add at this point. I, I think you gave a pretty good overview of, of that segment. I think that, that there was. Go ahead. I was going to ask, um, does EDM have a person who's uh, an expert in historic preservation matters? Would you all mind just pausing for one second? I have a delivery that I think I have to sign for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Our doorbell doesn't work, so I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know they're there, you don't go. Hi, Kate. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Beth. Hi, Maria. Welcome Hi, to Patrick. see. Hi, Patrick. Mm -hmm. A Sadie lady. Oh, she's good. Can I just, uh, before we get into the specifics, I do think it would be helpful for us to um, identify the areas where we're going to want to have a, a discussion. And I think that if you look at the renovation overall, you've got the, the superstructure, you've got the roof, you've got the bells, you've got the stand that the bells stand on. You've got the wires, and then you've got the stand itself where they people play the piano or whatever that thing is, the, the, pl the playing stand. And so I, I think that, I think it's gonna be important to dissect the proposal into these component parts in terms of like whatever feedback that, you know, you want to, uh, you know, or, or requirements that you want to impose. Well, and can I ask a question about timing? Uh, this would go to Patrick and or Michael. Um, obviously, so the goal is to have this before the town meeting. Um, what do you see as the timing in terms of when and where the historical commission uh, can be most helpful in making sure that all the historical uh, T's are crossed and I's are dotted? I would actually say that once the select board and finance committee approve this article to move forward, then we should really begin digging into exactly the details of what we want to do as far as this project. So um, I would say in the next month, we're going to know that this is moving forward as an article. So we'd like to get ducks in a row so that once it's approved for funding, we can go out to bid and actually um, move from there. When is the town meeting scheduled? So right now, the town meeting, um, because of even though there's a lot of talk about them 
lifting resident uh, requirements as far as percentages of people in a building, they're still going to be maintaining the six foot distance, which means that okay. we can only put like 30 people in the gym. So we really are looking at trying to hold it on a Saturday. So the select board can delay town meeting. So we're probably looking at with Memorial Day and the rest, we're, we're most likely looking at the first, maybe first weekend in June to do it okay. on a Saturday outside. Um, you know, there is a chance we could try to do it though, just the Saturday right after the third Monday in, in May or, or the 11th, the 12th and 13th. So there's a couple dates. We're okay. actually going to be discussing it at the next Selectman's meeting, and that will be the Selectman's. Uh, but it'll be sometime in June, it looks like. Most okay. likely. Yeah. So Linda, so going back to your question on EDM, what was that? Um, we wanted to know that this report was very thorough, but it didn't talk very much about the superstructure at the top. And we just wondered, do they have a, a, a person who's involved in historic preservation on their staff? Because they mentioned they had worked on historic preservation projects, but um, I didn't go any farther with that. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't know, Chris. Do you know if there's an answer as to whether they had somebody specific that was histor historical? Or I mean, EDM is a company that handles all types of projects, from historical restoration right. to right. Uh, you know they they have people uh, in numerous um, specialties at that company. So. Um, Carlos yeah. Schneller, who, who was the individual engineer working for EDM, is, is well versed in, in um, you know, historical uh, restoration projects and whatnot. As far as credentials or anything like that, I'm sure that I could get some f information for you um, to back that up. But as far as his, you know, okay. what, what, what he may hold for credentials, I'm not sure off the top of my head. But Carlos may be the person that. Um... I mean, he definitely came to look at the project. Absolutely, but, absolutely. and um, yeah. you know, in speaking with him and, and observing him as he worked, um, I, I feel comfortable with his um, assessments and, and his expertise. Um, just, but again, that's just me speaking as far as official credentials. Okay. We, can, we can follow up with Carlo. I'm sure he, I'm sure he can provide us some uh, testimonials at very, very minimum. It strikes me that we might want to have a second meeting at some point with Carlos and the Historical Commission. Um, you know, this kind of goes to some of the timing that Michael mentioned. Um, you know, once we know this is going forward, at least if it were past the Finance Committee um, and it's going to be on the warrant, we, you know, we probably want to get rolling. We want to maybe meet with him to be sure that, as I say, all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted in terms of uh, all due attention to the historic preservation issues. And I think maybe you want to go one step further and really, Michael can't put out the bid documents on the various components of the work. I mean, some of it is specialty like burden, I think, that is really going to have one vendor, but other parts maybe, maybe you know, uh, have, need to be competitively bid. But I, I think you, you guys need to sort of really weigh in on what the expectations are uh, for what the work is as a, as a, a precursor to even be able to you know, um, solicit, you know, bids to do the work. So, you know, I think, I think really kind of going from the top to bottom of the building and, and to weighing in on, on those specifics is really a, a critical first step so that we know what the work, you know, entails. Well, the, the scope of work would be guided by the Secretary of Interior's standards for historic properties. Um, so someone conversant with that um, Bible needs to help guide that scope of work. Um, just okay. so we have, a, you know, we need a, a roadmap um, and yeah. sort of a, a timeline that is reasonable and, you know, weather dependent. Um, so I think that's a good first step. Um, Along, along those lines, Linda, and this is just my ignorance because I've never been involved in a project like this before, should we make sure there's a budget of some amount for a consultant who understands that that Bible? Um, 
to make sure that they're, you know, should we have somebody weighing in to do that evaluation? Should we budget for that? I mean, how does that work typically in projects like this? Well, I, be, oh, I, I just want to say one thing. It, there, there's a different thing, you know, the specialist person, we can assume maybe someone at EDM, but when it comes down to the actual work, a project manager will be needed because you're coordinating three different pieces of work between the bells, the masonry, and the actual construction up at the top in the very vulnerable area where the bells hang. Mm -hmm. So that that's a concern right there. Uh, they, they might be two different people actually, but the firm that takes the project on needs someone under their roof that has that expertise. And if they don't have them, they'll have to get them. Um, but on the town's point of view or the position of the town, there, there should be oversight by someone who really is understanding about all these little pieces of, um, you know, the work ethic that's required on a national register building. So that's um, something we can factor in. Okay. Yeah, we, we've, uh, yeah, I would, I would assume that through EDM or the other, we're, we're going to have construction oversight. We're going to have the rest involved. Um, all these, all the bids that we had from our, our cost estimates included a 15%. And then I added 15% contingency on top of that to make sure that okay. if anything comes in that we need additional, that we're not running the numbers too close. So um, they put 15% into each of their proposals. And then I put a 15% on top so that we can um, address any concerns that raise. Because the last thing I want to do is come up that we're short um, monies, even though, yeah, uh, already we're seeing an escalation in costs um, for construction <laughs> already. So they're, they're we, yeah. <laughs> but I think right now we have, we have enough built-in uh, overhead um, in that, because um, I'm seeing that, you know, for the 200,000 for the roof, they have, uh, you know, 21,000 in overhead um, built in. And then, like I said, at, we put another 15% on top of it. Linda, I see that Bruce has his hand up whenever you think it's good to call on him. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Bruce. Um, so the Verdon Company has tremendous expertise. And, and they're actually the people who would put together the stand that the bells are going to stand on, not EDM. Mm -hmm. EDM is the tower. The structure of the bells and the bells themselves are, are Verdon's responsibility. They're, they're probably the only company in the Western Hemisphere who does this at the level that they do. And they are, um, they've been around since 1850. They have uh, lots of bona fides in terms of projects they've worked on. And I think their expertise is beyond question in mm -hmm. this field. So I think there's some comfort in that. Um, uh, just that, for clarity, they are going to do the construction carpentry up there? Well, they're-, they're Oh, not, the bells. They, they can- Only the bells. Yeah, they were doing the bells, the stand, the, the, the controls, the, they were the looking at, they do the clock repair, that piece. Mm -hmm. But then there is the actual construction of the rooftop, which would be, um, Right. done underneath our engineers with a contractor, a general contractor. And that's where we would need that oversight. Um, right, but I took that as the, the oversight would be on the existing building, the structural stuff, which is small. But a lot of that's just repointing between the stones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then there is the large scale roof replacement, which is yeah. gonna be very, um, but, gonna have to be well controlled. Let me just finish. Um, the um, so Verdon would build the con the new console and they would build the structure that holds the bells. Not EDM. EDM does would do all the other tower the tower related stuff. When you say a new console, are you talking about the the what? piano thing? The playing part. And is, is there no chance to renovate the existing one? Well, that's that's why we're here. This is a this is what the historical commission needs to. Uh, um, to determine um, um, whether the what the balance will be between um, 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 the historical preservation of the existing structures and the need for this tower to be functional, musical, and continue on as an important instrument. 
Um, so that's really, when this started, um, we referred this, the, the Chime people, which is really me and Claire Williams, um, referred this to the selectmen in 2017. The bells stopped ringing that, that year. I'm not mm -hmm. sure you noticed, but um, uh, we never heard back from anything. I'm the one who called Burden myself and got them to come in and look at it in 2018. Mm -hmm. And then that drew attention from the town finally. So that's what, how we got where we are. That when everybody came in from, well, you guys all came in, it was great because then we looked at, we started to look at the structure of the tower, the whole picture, how we would pay for it and all that stuff. Cause I just, I was looking at the cables, the way the bells played, how the bells are mounted and whether and the, the whole structure is leaning and held up by jacks up there. That's the part that Verdon would fix that holds the bells, the frame that holds the bells themselves. Mm -hmm. Burden yeah. would rebuild that. The, the, the roof, the pointing and the masonry and all the other things, that's the EDM side. I, I, don't, I hope that sort of clarifies things for, for what that is. There's two yeah. projects here. Um, yes, I shouldn't say yeah. The high school English teacher would slap me. Um, yeah. the, the, I think that the confusion might be, um, it, you know, it's a tripartite thing. And so to fit these pieces together to make the whole is where the historical commission is struggling right now. So, because we don't have every piece of information. Right. Which is not necessarily important at this moment, except that we need to anticipate how we're gonna get those things together in the scope of work. So as far as the bells go, it's very clear that Verdon is probably the only company that can do that kind of work. Um, particularly on a sensitive building like this. This is a very delicate 1878 structure. And um, it, it takes a lot of sensitivity and expertise because you, you don't wanna have anything go wrong that you can anticipate. Um, Bert was already familiar with this structure when I called them. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good Kate, thing. Kate has her hand up, Linda, if it's okay. right to call on yep. her. Kate. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just delighted that there is uh, there is motion on on the Chime Tower. Um, I just wanted to weigh in on Verdon. I've I've looked into the company. Um, I am trained as a musician. I went to New England Conservatory, and um, majored in violin. And the company is is clearly the way to go. And um, the sound, of course, is of primary importance here. So every effort should be made to, to uh, tune in to that, no pun intended. And um, I guess, you know, I, I haven't seen the council. I, I'd love to go up there some, at some point and see it. And, um, but I do know um, the, ins, you know, from the standpoint of instruments, working on the support as well as the bells themselves, the chimes themselves, they're integral and it needs to be, it needs to be handled by the same company. So, so if we can just maybe walk through the three different parts um, because we are definitely having Verdun um, looking at them as um, being the company to handle the, the bells, the instruments, the, the bell mounting and all the rest. Um, so that's one component. The other component is the existing structural stone masonry, which overall is in good shape. There is some masonry that is uh, some of the um, limestone in the masonry. There's some cracking in the in the in between the stones in some of the areas that need to be replaced. A lot of that is very basic, and even EDM identifies it as pretty simple. Um, replace of, uh, of the cavities and pockets in between in the cracked limestone um, in between. Um, then we have the roof itself, which is probably the other big historical piece because there's a lot of questions on how um, making sure that that part is historically um, done. Um, I know when we were out there, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, the structural part is pretty standard even to this day as far as how they would replace between the stones, the mortar and the rest, so. That's correct, that's correct. So are you talking about all of the masonry or just at the top? Actually more toward the bottom, they had okay. some issues with uh, just the mortar 
where it needs to be replaced between the stones to prevent water from getting in and causing further damage. Right. So those were pretty, and, and I can make sure that everybody has copies of these. Um, the structural narrative one is pretty straightforward. Um, it's, like I said, mostly the mortar between stones looking at where water penetration is and just uh, fixing those areas. Then we have the chime tower roof, which is restoring the roof to the historical, uh, to its historical nature, and then everything doing with the instrument itself. So, including the stand that it sits on. Yeah, which would be Verdun. Right. I have, I have a question stand, right. about the documents. Um, so, uh, Michael, you sent to us. There's the EDM uh, document entitled "Children Chime Tower Structural Narrative," uh, dated December 17. Uh, yep. Then there's this um, uh, cost estimator document from PM&C, um, dated uh, January 12. And I'm just wondering, um, what did PM&C work off of to do their cost estimates? Was there something from EDM that said, "Hey, here's what needs to happen"? Uh, yes. Yeah, and I can. I'm that, sorry if that, didn't get, if that didn't get included. There was the roof replacement. This was just the cost. The 20, yeah. Okay. The 25-page document is the one that um, came from EDM first, and that was updated or not? Am, am I not understanding? So we have this um, I'm not sure about 25 pages, Linda. Yeah, the EDM document is 25 pages. I only printed three pages of, but I read it um, yeah. and made comments on every page. Maybe, maybe I'm just missing something. I've only got a 10 page EDM document. That's in, all I've got too. So, so we have the children's time tower, okay. tower structural narrative, which is tech 11 pages. We have the chime tower five pages, which is the cost estimate. We have Verdin's okay. Time Tower uh, renovation, which is a uh, seven, I believe seven pages. And then we have the Chime Tower roof replacement, um, which is EDM's proposal to replace the roof. Uh, this is a structural, uh, the whole, everything that would be done. This is the basically the bid general bid document that I could send out. That's actually 64 pages that then they did the roof off of. But I can double check and make sure that everybody has okay. everything um, hey, Mike, that we have to date. Mike, quick question. Can you tell us, where is EDM based? Can you tell us just like in a nutshell, a little bit about the company? So e EDM is uh, located out of Pittsfield, Mass, uh, Unionville, Connecticut, and Troy, New York. Uh, they're an architectural engineering and management company. Uh, I'm familiar. We've used them in the city of North Adams. And then uh, Chris said we used them here in Stockbridge pri mm -hmm. previously. They've, they worked on a number of projects for the town with great success. Yeah. Very responsive, very responsible. Um, they, they really specialize in project management. Um, it's, they, re they really shine in that aspect of things. So um, just, to, just to wrap that up with the documentation, Michael, I don't think uh, we got what I understand it is a, another EDM document which focuses on the work to be done on the superstructure, if you will, yeah. um, the 60 page one or how, whatever number you said. So yeah, if you could send that, um, yeah, I'm going to go, I'll go through and make sure you have everything to date um, that we have going forward. And then the, the, the one with the tower is really the PM and C is just them going through the document created by EDM and doing a cost analysis to make sure that we have an accurate cost to move forward with. So. Got it. Um, yeah, so we clearly want to look at that other document um, that that PM&C was using for the cost estimate. And, and I'm sure that'll be helpful. I still am kind of thinking we'll want to have a follow-up meeting with EDM to begin to focus on the historic preservation specifics um, and we can work that out. Yeah. Okay, that's great because I, I, I definitely have not seen that. And that would be really helpful before having a, even a site meeting or 
visited out there. Yeah. Um, and I think the last thing that we had discussed um, before, there was an issue on the number of bells. And I think in terms of the, again, of the scope of the work that making the bells ring is really critical here. And it sounds like there's a good hope for that because Verdon did not perceive anything that was, you know, needing to be totally replaced in terms of the bells. Um, there's a lot of issues with the tone, I can tell. But um, I think, again, if we're sticking to the historic preservation aspect of this, anything that can be repaired before it's replaced is a very critical point. And that's the Secretary of the Interior Standards. I think adding new bells up there maybe is outside the world of historic preservation uh, here because um, operative words, historic and preservation. So there we are. Bruce, um, do you, uh, I got a sense when we met back in October that while you might kind of like to have the three extra bells and the new chime stand that you could probably be fairly happy if what is there now was all beautifully restored. If, was I right in thinking that? What, what's your opinion on that? My I'm not sure I have an opinion, but maybe I can help clarify what the what the um, what the options are. I guess I do have sort of have an opinion, but um, um, the existing uh, uh, console that plays the bells, these are the levers that play the bells, just to make this clear to everybody. Um, I don't know how far back that dates. It's pretty old. Mm -hmm. It might not be the original, but it's it's been around for a long time. One of the, one of the reasons it's in such disrepair is because of its age. And we have repaired these, all this stuff a million times and it just keeps falling apart. We've just got past the point where we could maintain it. And that's why we're where we are now. Um, but the, um, there's the issue of the musicality of the bells also. And that's the, the missing piece of this discussion so far is that. This is, in, this is a, as Verdon will tell you, this is a unique instrument. It's not just an historic instrument. It's an active playing instrument. Mm -hmm. I think that the... Um, the concept of whether you preserve it like it's a museum piece or whether we wanted to have an enhanced musicality by adding the three bells is the issue of for discussion around that that whole thing. If you expand this, it allows for, um, for one thing, we're really limited in octave range. So it's, it's very difficult to play a lot of different types of music as a result. Um, harmonic play, in other words, playing two bells together is difficult with, with the number of bells that we have now. One of the bells that was added in 1973 is neither compatible in tone nor in tune to the bells that, um, that were existing before that. Um, so I think there were 10 bells and then there became 11 bells in 73. That was a gift from somewhere. I think that bell came from, from England and um, we, never, we, we hardly ever touch it. So in terms of making this a sustained, a gift to the town, again, as it once was, um, I think the musicality should probably be considered. Um, this is supposed to ring for everybody in the town to provide enjoyment and, 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 a, and, a, and, a, and enhance the quality of life in town. And um, to do that, probably it would do a better job of that as Mr. Field intended, if there were three extra bells. That said, mm -hmm. it looked the same as it did. The console will not, will not look the same as it did. Nothing else will be really apparent to anybody from the outside, but the inside playing stand would have to be, instead of repairing it, you, you, there would need to be a new one, which Verdon would also build. So those are the issues for you guys in terms of, you know, are you, are you, if you're gonna go buy the book, then you're gonna renovate the old stand. But if you wanna consider what the intent was of the tower and originally, and, and, and whether that's something you guys feel comfortable talking about or doing something about, that's, that's how I would lay that out to you. Okay, well, if we don't, okay, let's say that our baseline date here is the 1878, but were there not things done to this um, instrument in the early 1900s? Were some work done there? Well, I'm I not mean, sure. Maria I'm not had sure. given me a date on some bells, I think, being added, but I don't have it in front of me. 1973. Oh, so that's the late one. Okay. One I told you about, yeah. I'm trying to figure that, out. That was my tenth bell. Yeah, I'd I'd like to second Bruce's comments. Um, this is all about music, and it's bizarre to hear. I mean, I, 
haven't heard the chimes in quite some time, but um, when they were still played, it, it's pretty bizarre to hear something, mm -hmm. hear something played, hear a song, and then all of a sudden have to hear the uh, a jump of an octave because um, you know the notes aren't there. So I would I would definitely support putting the musicality and the sound as the number one priority in proceeding with this project. Being a historic preservation person, I'm pushing back on that. Um, uh, I mean, my sense is this is something that was deemed to be good when it was put together by Mr. Field and it's played well all these years. And yes, we can't play every song in the world, but my understanding is there's a lot of songs that can be played and played well. And, and when Verdon does this work to restore it, my sense is it'll be just like a night and day compared to the way it's been in recent years. Well, no, not, not exactly. It will be very playable. But it, it, in terms of its um, um, versatility, it will be what it was before. So the Verdon um, document um, made it sound as if they were very confident that they would be able to get these in balance and in better condition um, for the ones that exist right now. Yep. Um, is there anything in there that I missed in that document? Because I thought the were very confident about what they could do. They love the chimes. They love this project. <laughs> well, that's they, a good thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a big difference when somebody's invested and they are. They love, okay. the, they love this, this landmark. I mean, I think another thing to keep in mind is that this is it's definitely a draw for young families and children. And um, Bruce has been bringing along younger people who are interested in the bells. And um, if adding three extra notes means that uh, something that wasn't, a, you know, songs that weren't able to be played before can now be played, I think that definitely adds to the to the interest mm -hmm. and the appeal. Yeah, it does. We sounds, have I, it sounds to me like this is a fifty thousand dollar decision, though, to add bells um, and bells that were not there. So. It is something to consider. Can I, I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, let me preface this by saying I, I, um, I think an octave is when you are at a higher note. Um, and I couldn't, uh, I can't identify a single note of music. So uh, I'm asking stupid questions because I don't know these things. Um, my first question is this. Um, should the decision revolve around whether to remove the 1973 bell or add the three bells? Or would that be adding four bells? Because I think that right now we're sort of in an in-between. We either should renovate to the historic um, original uh, design by, you know, Field or whoever it was, or add other bells. But this weird addition of 1973 bell uh, as kind of troubles me if, if, if our goal is to renovate it to its original, you know, status. So that was one thought. The second thought I have is um, uh, I think we should focus on making the best decision, not what it costs um, uh, within reason. Uh, and my third question is, could the console either be, be, could there be an option to add additional notes to the console without replacing it? And I've never been in the structure, so this is a really dumb question, but could there be an option to have a second console to play additional notes while maintaining the historic and original console in it as well? Or is that just dumb because there's only one set of wires, you know? Mm. The, the, the square footage of the space there is not going to permit a second console. Okay. Um, and the, the expansion of the console is going to, is not really going to allow for the console to be bigger. It just needs, it would just need to be redesigned. The, 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 the chief problem of the console became it was unplayable. The bells, you would you could press a lever, the bell, there might be a delay one day with a particular bell. The next day it would be a different bell. It was impossible to play. It became, you had to get this eccentric feel for how to get, get any music out of it. And that, that can it be repaired? Yeah, it can be. It can, the, the whole thing can be restored and repaired. And, and I believe you could also ask Verdon about the, um, the newest bell. Um, and what can be done 
to possibly, if there's anything that, to be done with this bell, um, you know, playing more in tune at least, its tone doesn't match the other bells either. And I'm not sure what can be done about that. Right. Um, and saying, sure, to bring a bell a hundred years later in and, and, and stick it on the end of these other bells that, that were the original bells. Well, that's why I'm asking, should that one be removed regardless of the, the other ones? That's, I think that's a question to talk to Verdon about Verdun. what the pros and cons of that are. If they didn't make that bell. Verdon didn't no, add from England. No. They added it, but they didn't make it. No, they didn't. No, they've never been here before. Verdon. Oh, okay. They okay. don't know. They, but they know this bell um, because they know every kind of, and this is a relatively rare structure and a rare, in, this is, they call this a musical instrument. They don't call it a tower. They look, well, I call it an instrument. <laughs> um, they know of it because, yeah. because of its just notoriety. So do we know who had been servicing this structure before Verdon came in Chris and made this know. estimate Chris in the past years? 75. I'm not aware that we ever had a, a vendor, an outside vendor, do any work on it. I, I do know that for several years that Lindy Searing from the highway department has done you know quite a bit of uh, yes. work. Um, he's, he's limped it along and kept it, kept it in okay. You know, halfway usable shape. He's, uh, there was a company from Troy, New York at its best. <laughs> there was a company from Troy, Troy, New York at, that came in 1975, okay. and that was the last maintenance that was done. Yeah. On that. Okay. Bruce, I, I'm wondering just by you describing this as a rare musical instrument that has a lot of notoriety. Let me preface by saying I, I'm completely in support of the stakeholders, you know, uh, the, 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 the players and the historical commission making this decision. Um, I don't feel qualified to, but I will say that when you talk about a rare instrument with, you know, a lot of national notoriety, it does seem to argue for preserving it in its state. I, and I understand how terrible that is from a you know, kind of playing all the notes, <laughs> um, but boy, it, it, it seems like, you know, it's not, if this isn't a common thing. Yeah, there, most of these towers are, most of these types of arrangements are played by computers. Yeah. Mm, true. Right, players left. Harder. True. So that's, that makes this real, especially, particularly unusual. Plus the whole history of the field and the mandate to, for it to be children's music and all that stuff is very interesting to people. So in the bell world is where the notoriety is really. I don't know if it's, you know, but it's, um, but the idea of making it more able to deliver on its mission is really where the other side of the coin is. Yeah. So that's the discussion here. I'm not telling you to go one way or the other myself, um, but but I think that, I think what Field intended and what the, that, um, if Field were here, he might see this opportunity as a good one. Why didn't they put in 13 or 14 bells in 1878? Do you know? No, no. I mean, that's, that's you know, I, no idea. No idea when they built it, how that, how that worked. But yeah, so my feeling is what was good enough for Mr. Field in 1878 mm -hmm. should be good enough today if we restore it properly. And I, I just personally feel strongly about that. I hear, I hear what you're saying, Peter. I don't think anybody has any idea what, what Dudley Field thought was good enough. He probably he buy have wanted eighteen bells for all you know so <laughs> or twenty. Well, Some he was a good 21. grandfather, but maybe he didn't want to pay that much. <laughs> but but I, I I hear that side of it also. I just I wanted to advocate for the music. <laughs> I think Kate did also because of the the cultural implications of that, and also future generations and and what it can mean to them. Um, and and really thinking about the legacy of Mr. Field was really that there be music. And so that's where I was coming from with that. But th it is. I, I, think, I think that uh, what you say is, you know, Verdon can really ensure better musicality because they see that they know how to do it. And they're trying to tell us they know how to do it. So right. I mean, there, there are a lot of songs you can play with the current bells once assuming they're all working properly. Am I right, Bruce? Well, you're asking somebody who's a musician, and I would say, um, from the layman's point of view, you might just, you could probably assume that. But um, they're, they're, the the problem is the bells themselves are of, are restricted to a certain scale. I don't know if you understand scales of music, but their music, the, the, the array of, of notes that are played, um, is is called a scale. And this 
plays a specific scale that limits the number of songs you can pick. So, um, for example, if you were to play Amazing Grace, it's quite awkward if you can get the notes in because you've got to, as, as you're moving up to the higher part, suddenly you have to hit a note that's like an octave below, which sounds really strange. It would sound strange to you as a layperson. I think that, that that's been a frustration point for some of our Tanglewood kids who've come down to play the bells. Um, and, and have some skills um, to um, find that the bells don't have that they're, they're a scale that is unusual, kind of unusual. It just it just doesn't. It sounds awful when you have to jump around the way you do. There, it doesn't and, play a lot of songs really well. I'll say that, but it plays enough. And and and, and I'm, I'm not trying to um, change your mind here necessarily. I think you've, you're, you're, you know, I, I agree with you some, to some extent. You're on the right track. I'm not sure what the answer is, is, what, is all I can tell you. And I've given you, sort of given you information to think about. That was my intent here. I didn't want to lose the, the, musical, the musical aspect of it. And I think neither did Kate, so. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think here. If we have any other questions. Um... I did put some documents into the chat. And I also sent them to you just from my email threads, uh, both from Verdon and from, uh, from EDM. So just in case anybody was missing any of those, you can either get them from your email or from chat. I, I would just add one more resource to you guys that you might want to think about if you want to know what's gone on with the bells over the years. Claire Williams um, played the bells as a child here. Her mother okay. played the bells. So she got, and she's 93 now, and she is sort of the the grand dom of the bells at this point, I guess you would call her. She, um, um, up until a couple of years ago, she was still going up in the tower. She's the one who put the display case in there with the old photos. And, and we put the, uh, we put information in there for people to read when they came in to see the, the tower itself um, about the history of the bells. Um, so she, she's a, 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 she's somebody who grew up in town and knows the bells from a long time ago, if you want to ask her anything else. And her mother also played. Yes. Did you say? Yep. Her family lived up on. Um, her father worked for the, the owners of what became the Marion Fathers. The. Uh, the so, okay. So now, what was her mother's name? I just want to know if I come across this in their records. I'm sorry, you'd have That's to ask. That's okay. Mrs. Williams. Williams. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. No. 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 Glaze. Her maiden name was Glaze. I'd also just add that there, there is a lot that changes um, over time in, in old instruments. If you think of a, of a violin or a cello, oh, yeah. um, the modern violins are not anything, I mean, they're, they look similar, but there's quite a bit that is different from a violin that was played centuries ago. And um, generally, you know, these changes have, um, yeah. Um, they've they've resulted in 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 better sound and um, they they match, they match the music of the times and I I do think that is a consideration here. So one thing is is that we do have in the proposal and and what's going to town meeting does have the funds available to do the three extra, but it's not something that we're committed to. So at this point, a decision doesn't need to be made, but the funding is there regardless of which direction is chosen to go. Because it was 56,868 to do uh, the adding of the three bells and then a new control table, so. Hi, um, I'm not sure why I was asked to unmute and I don't know if I can make a great contribution, but a couple of things. Um, in England, and whether it transferred to America or not, I cannot be sure, the number of bells and the size of the bells had to do with the superiority of the institution, in this case, generally churches. So um, David Dudley Field may have been being respectful of that, keeping the number smaller. But I think that um, for me, words matter. 
and he called it the children's chime tower. And I think he meant it as he meant the, the playground um, that he created where we have the uh, Eaton Hall housing right now. In both those cases, he was meaning to amuse children. So while I greatly respect um, both Bruce and Kate, hi to both of you, um, I don't think he was worried about superior musicality. I think he was worried about um, two things, amusing the children and Claire Williams, who is the dearest person, um, doing those that, that, that chime as a child, I think is exactly what David Dudley Field intended. And, um, and the other thing he intended was something near and dear to his heart, and that was keeping time. Speaking of keeping time, is, is the clock repair in or out of uh, what we're thinking right now? That's in. The budget, in. Right, Michael, it's in. Yeah. Good. All options are in. And then if we decide any options we want to take out. And is there, um, is there a document from, and I guess maybe there isn't, I'm just not thinking of it, from uh, Verdon. I mean, Verdon would do that work, right? Did they do it? Yeah, they gave us just a, do and here's what the yeah, they just gave us a very short cost on what it would be to, they didn't, they didn't add on to their proposal. They just said to do the clock renovation, it would be X. I believe it was 28,000 and something. Thank you. But we have enough in there to do all, all the options. Well, it sounds like we're gonna to wanna to follow up at some point with Vernon about this extra 1970s bell to see what everybody thinks about that. Um, I think we want to look at these new document, this new document, the 60 pager from EDM, and then maybe have a follow up meeting with Carlos or whoever would be the right person to talk about uh, historic preservation values in that work, particularly on the superstructure, but also on the mortar and whatnot. Now, some of this will, like with Verdin, will happen after, probably more than likely after we brought them in and then say, hired them and said, here's what we're proposing to do. And then decisions need to be made to direct them. Right. And this commission would have to decide, are you adding the bells, not adding the bells? Are we doing the clock? Are we not doing the clock and the rest? But like I said, we'll have it fully funded so that no matter what decision you make, we can accommodate it. Well, I think this is a great project. Let me just say, you know, I applaud everybody who's been involved. Uh, thank you, Bruce, for getting it started, and uh, and uh, thank you, uh, all the town officials who are helping move it along. And yeah, I think, Absolutely. I think we're very supportive, and we, uh, you know, of course, and I, I'm sure I know the town feels so. It just needs to be done right, and I think I think we can all get together and make that happen. I agree. Thank you all for 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 for, for this work. Um, I think it's really important. I think the the tower is really important. It's it's unique. So I'm grateful, grateful for everybody chipping in now. And, and yep. I think it sounds like it's going to turn out great. Whatever, whatever decision to make, we'll, we'll be happy with. I, I just found on my phone a short video that I took in August of 2019 of Claire playing the chimes. Um, oh, play it. If I can, if I can play it on my phone and hold my phone up to the <laughs> camera, I think you can see it and then get a pretty good idea of the, uh, the, the instrument uh, part of the bell. So let me let me try to do this. It doesn't seem to be any sound, but oh. Hmm. Not there I see her. It's not very oh, oh, good. right there. Hmm. That's great. I could try to get this to my computer and email it as well. Oh there she is. Okay. He's reading her music and the levers are below her there. That's how it plays. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's great, Chris. I think we I think we just found our next TikTok video. 
<laughs> this, was, this was shortly after Lindy Searing had gone up and, and um, done some repair work and got it somewhat playable. We took a stab at it. We got it to play for a week oh. before the cable fell out again. It will be great to get it uh, working well. And it seems like Tiverton people are, are ideal for that. And, and by the way, we all, we all owe Lindy a, a vote of thanks, too, because the Bells would have uh, stopped playing probably around 2012 without him. Mm. We kept them going another five or six years with all the climbing around and sticking things up there. <laughs> Chewing gum and wire, then to help holding it all together. Can I just say how pleased I am with just how this project has progressed generally and how this meeting progressed? I wish every town meeting that I attended was this civil, was this, you know, informed and was this sort of, um, you know, consensus driven. And so just thanks to everybody who's participated in this for all this hard work to get us here. You guys. Maria, is there any uh, history that you uh, have wanted to add that you haven't added? Um, not really. I, my one thing I wanted to ask is, and, and it's nothing you'd make a decision until you make a decision about the uh, bells. But if, um, how big is the console if they decide to replace it with the new console because you add three new bells? Is that something that could be donated to the museum and archives? I mean, I'd hate to see it pitched. Right. No, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Jordan actually recommended that they would still restore the old one and that it could be placed in a location where they could see the original. Oh, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. Yep. That's a good, really good point, Maria. Thank you. Yeah. And I, another thing I, I like is um, the detail they got into is the, um, the uh, marker that's in the step going into the bell tower that they're doing a lot of. Uh, uh, work in making sure that's put back where it belongs and at the right angle and everything. Yeah, I think they did a nice job. Yeah. Linda, anything else? Um, I'm just trying to catch up here for a second. I, have we covered everything that people wanted to say? I feel like we have, and, and I, you know, I think, um, you know, I sort of outlined what I see as the next couple of steps, and uh, it seems like we have a road to continue to go down. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think it would be great to get this on the warrant, and hopefully the finance committee is supportive uh, because I think we're supportive, and we'll just help. Uh, see that the historic values are preserved as we go along. All right, so. Shall we uh, adjourn, uh, Linda, anything else that? Uh... I, I think we've covered it. Um, anyone else have anything they want to add? Nope. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thank I move we adjourn. I'll second it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, everybody.